Hi, uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, in this module, we will be looking at uh, the operation of a TI board. Now, when what I mean by TI board is a board from Texas Instrument. Uh, we are using this uh, for uh, several experiments uh, uh, in our course. Uh, so, to understand what kind of experiments we will be using in particular, uh, we, we need to understand how the uh, TI board operates. It looks like this. So, and uh, as you see it, it is too complicated, but it, in reality it is not. So, if you zoom this one, what you find is uh, you have a breadboard. Right, you can see here there is a breadboard, and then there are several circuits. Several circuits. It comes with the uh, connection. So if you connect ground plus ten minus ten, it goes and powers all the operation amplifiers, all the ICs within the TI board. Okay. Apart from there, there are lot of uh, uh, circuits. Some something like DC-DC converter, uh, diodes. Right. There is an inverting amplifier, analog multiplier. Uh, there are op amp, which is a basic type op amp without any resistors. This is like here. Okay, something with resistors is like here. So, uh, the, the uh, TA of uh, this particular course uh, Anil Vishnu, he will be showing you in detail how we can use this particular board. Uh, uh, as far as the experiments are concerned, what kind of experiments we will be using. So, see the advantage of this particular board is you do not have to really uh, uh, work on different components, all the components are mounted, you have to just connect it with the help of the breadboard. It is very easy, right? And once you power it through here, uh, all the ICs are powered within it. So, that your life becomes very easy. So, uh, a TI board like this can be really helpful uh, for understanding lot of uh, uh, basic experiments. Uh, for advanced experiments like ECG, on off controller, we will be showing you uh, uh, as a separate set of experiments, which are big experiments, and we will give you a live demo how we are going to measure ECG. Uh, it is a very challenging experiment, so you need to focus when we are talking about ECG. Right now, let us see how this particular thing will work. Uh, as for the experiments for the TI boards are concerned, we will be using this board for voltage control oscillator, we will be using for clipper, we will be using for clamper, we will be using for uh, full wave rectifier, we will also show you the deck card within it, we will also show you DC DC converter within it and we will also show you multiplier within it. So, there are a lot of experiments that we are going to show you with TI board uh, and uh, let us see how we will be using in the in the following modules. This module particularly is focused on how the TI board uh, works, what are the things within it in detail alright. So, like I said uh, Anil will be showing you in detail uh, the experiments, experiments we have designed a uh, uh, lot of experiments we have designed for this particular course and uh, the, the TA will be taking and showing you the experimental portion and if you have any questions again uh, feel free to ask me, feel free to ask them right uh, in the forum we will reply to you. Anil you can continue now. Welcome, in this module uh, we will introduce you uh, to the basic building blocks that are uh, composing this uh, analog systems uh, lab kit. As you are well aware uh, in this course we are trying to uh, acquaint, like, acquaint you with analog circuit design basically, analog circuit design, analog system design uh, by using uh, this specific TI board called the analog system lab kit analog system lab kit uh, uh, and make uh, run you through basic building blocks of how analog systems are designed and how analog circuits are designed. This is like the uh, first uh, module where like we are trying to introduce you to the different components and features that are available in this kit. This is very important uh, for you to understand further uh, lectures uh, and further lab experiments that we will be showing in this course. Uh, most of the experiments which we will show will try to uh, focus on this board itself and show you how using the features available in this board you can build good working interesting systems. So, uh, this board is named analog system lab kit and uh, it is it is from uh, Texas instruments as you are aware TI is a uh, uh, world leader in uh, analog circuits, analog ICs and uh, digital signal processing ICs. Uh, so, uh, these are several modules, uh, we will go through each of them uh, in detail. So, so the main idea behind uh, us using this board for this course uh, is to acquaint you to how a cost efficient uh, platform like this lab kit uh, can be used uh, by students as a test bed for uh, realizing most of the uh, analog systems 
using general purpose ICs which are also mounted on this board. So, such ICs are op amps, multipliers etcetera. So, uh, from a general point of view this board comes with three general purpose operational amplifiers which is the uh, TL0A2 which is Texas Instruments uh, uh, operational amplifier and three they have three wideband precision multipliers analog multipliers. So, it also includes two 12 bit parallel input multiplying digital to analog converter <coughs> which is here. Uh, so, and a portion of the board is also available for general purpose prototyping and you can use it for carrying out mini projects where you want to interface the board with any outside world or outside uh, subsystems. <coughs> if you look at this PCB, uh, so at the let us start off like, so okay fine this is a kit made by a company uh, and that is that can be used by students to understand analog system design. So, one, one board can be used to understand multiple different different circuits. Uh, now, but then uh, our idea is to understand how the analog circuit is designed right. So, you have to look at everything. So, if you look at this PCB also this is uh, this is uh, around uh, 2.4 mm PCB look at the thickness. So, this will be around 10 layer or 16 layer PCB. So, that information is not provided by Texas Instruments, but we are just speculating that it will be around a 16 layer PCB and uh, they are able to pack <coughs> so many features in this PCB of uh, this dimension. So, dimension is around 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter that is the dimension of this board. So, you, you when you look at such boards you should also have this fascination of how people are able to design and what are the ergonomics and uh, re how they are using the real estate. So, this whenever you are making a PCB you have to look at the real estate this is the real estate that you are having. So, 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter uh, square is the real estate you are having and how much can you how much uh, um, functionality can you pack in your uh, how much functionality can you pack in your uh, PCB is also something that you should always be aware of. Now, uh, let us start off by seeing main important blocks. So, for any IC to work first you need your main power. So, this is where the your power uh, comes in. So, this has a provision for giving plus 10 volt minus 10 volt and ground. So, that is what is written here plus 10 volt ground and minus 10 volt. So, this is where you give your supply and this lines. So, this we have connected it here through these wires. So, this is plus 10 volt minus 10 volt ground. So, these are connected to this regulated power supply and once this power comes in if you have to. So, most of these ICs right most of the ICs in this board like the op amp, the multiplier etcetera these ICs already are working on 10 volt. So, if you are a little bit aware of PCB design you will know that these lines would already be routed to these ICs. So, do not <coughs> so we do not have to give connection from this 10 volt to these ICs they are already routed in the layers within the PCB. Now, why then why are these so these are Berg connections ok jump out connections from where you can take this 10 volt minus 10 volt and ground to anywhere else that you need. So, then why are these bergs given if all these ICs are connected already inside these bergs are given. So, that in case you want to give supply to any external item uh, component that you have connected to this breadboard you can do so by drawing wires or jumper wires from here to here. How do we do that you will do that through using wires like this jumper wire. So, you have to take it like this. So, one end of this jumper wire will be a female connector and one end will be a male connector. Hope it is visible this is a male connector and the other end is a female connector. So, you use this you connect to your to your berg like this. So, it is connected to the berg from here you can take it anywhere if you want to take it to this PCB to this breadboard you can take it to this breadboard and connect it and keep. So, this way you can take supply to the breadboard. So, they have they have given the small breadboard. So, that you can have any other ICs if you want if you are building a system let us say you want to connect let us say you want to connect a display to this system. So, you can connect the display lines to this breadboard that is there and supply you can give in case you want 10 volt minus 10 volt or you want to make sub supplies like from the 10 volt you want to make 5 volt you want to make 3.3 volt you want to make 2.5 volt then you can take 10 volt from here 
connect I, another IC here, create the other voltages and then you can use them. So, that is why these Burr connections are given. So, this is related to the power supply. Okay. Now, another main component of uh, this board is the diodes. So, if you see here, <coughs> this is the diode in the board. So, if you see clearly, there is only an image of the diode here and uh, the diode as such is not there. So, actually you do not need the diode there because the operation of the diode is already inbuilt in the uh, board. So, you need to only give connections and then uh, the functionality will work. So, this is the P type end of the diode that is the N type N, N, N end of the diode the, or the if you are more familiar you will be knowing that cathode and anode terminals of the diode. Why diodes are there it, and if you see the relative size of the prints the diodes are also shown with very huge, big prints here. Because if you have any application as during the course of the, during the course of this uh, uh, analog systems uh, course you will understand how why how important a role that uh, uh, diodes play in different systems. If you are having circuits like uh, uh, half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier, uh, Schmidt triggers, you will have lot of circuits, um, clippers, clampers, all those circuits would essentially employ a diode to make the functionality work. So, diode is a very, very, very core part of any analog system design. So, that is why this diode is given. So, you can connect from any port. So, this board is rich replete or lot of the con like uh, there is there are lot of bergs in this board that these bergs are provided in this board for flexibility. So, that you can take out connections from anywhere you want and then you can connect it to anywhere you want so long as it those connections make sense. When you connect also you should make sure that you are not doing any uh, unnecessary uh, not allowed connections like you do not connect take bark from here connect from supply to ground like this. Then the whole board will get shorted and the whole board will get damaged. So, you should be as engineering students as students in technology. So, you see many people get degree B tech bachelor of technology, some people get big de degree B E bachelor of engineering. So, whatever be the degree you should leave up to the expectations of the degree that you are granted. So, be very very professional in what you do and be aware of the do's and do not'ts of working with anything. So, if you are working with this board you should know what you should what you can do you should know the limitations of this board you should know the powers of this board by power I mean what all experiments can you do with this board that you should know. Uh, right now you might not be aware so that is the purpose of this course we will be taking you through different different circuits uh, the design methodologies for those circuits simulations on how to do those circuits and how you can implement those circuits which you saw in the simulation using a any development kit uh, that is supplied by companies F just for that we are just using uh, this analog system lab kit as an example that is all just see this analog system lab kit as an just an example of how system design can be done using a uh, development board. So, coming back so make sure that you do not make any uh, uh, dangerous connections like connecting the ground to supply and connecting the ground to any uh, signal lines of ICs because those ICs are very critical components and they are very sensitive also. Their signal lines are very sensitive, they are very well calibrated from the uh, factory and supplied, they are factory tested. So, if you simply connect 10 volts of supply to a signal line most of the time it will still continue to work, but that will very much heavily hamper the lifetime of your ICs. And also it will have because it is part of coming as part of a PCB it will affect the lifetime of the entire components in the PCB. Why I am stressing more I am spending time in this aspect is because if you see here each and every there this board has given so much flexibility in how you use it. Each and every input line is there are they have given bergs where you can connect from anywhere you want. You can connect from within the board or you can connect from outside the board or you can connect from within the breadboard itself that is provided on the board. Because this much flexibility is given that is also because this flexibility is there that means you are also having responsibility because you have given power 
you also have the responsibility to make use of that power in the best way. The power, what is the power here? The power is your ability to show and study multiple circuits here. Now, let us see another uh, block in this uh, board which is trimmers, they are analog trimmers here. So, they this that is here, let us uh, see it properly now. Uh, so, this trimmers here. Uh, there are trimmers here, now you can see it. So, these are analog trimmers. So, they are used to like uh, trim your signals like you if you want to, it is uh, it's, it's another way of talking about clippers. So, you can uh, limit your uh, signal levels to particular values and uh, uh, and you, you if you want to limit your up, uh, positive excursions and negative excursions of your signal, you can do so here. Exactly how this works, we will go through as and when we do experiments relevant to this block. So, next is they have given few transistors. So, transistors are also very much required in analog system design. So, because transistors in analog circuits will act as switches depending on what is the voltage that is given to the base and you can actually uh, operate the transistor in the collect saturation region, cut off and saturate it can swing between cut off and saturation region and act as switch analog switches. So, uh, this is very important. So, they have given uh, the diagram of the a, a transistor also here and then they have marked it as emitter, collector and base. So, they have given this top berg if you see this top berg is for uh, it is divided into two, one is base they have given two options two bergs to connect the base. See here as per the uh, symbol here, so there is base coming the transistor symbol is here correct, collector is above, emitter is below and base is here correct. So, you can connect your inputs to the base, you can, connect, you can take out usually what happens usually the output is taken from the collector side right and you, you are might be thinking where is the VCC supply. So, supply is already given from within the board, this 10 volt it is already routed from inside to this uh, collector, to this uh, collector end for VDD. So, you can just, just take out from the collector and then emitter if you want to ground emitter you can ground the emitter or if you want to collect it uh, connect it somewhere you can do that also. So, they have provided two transistors this is if you look very closely at the uh, images that are uh, the, the prints that are there this is a bipolar junction transistor BJT this is simple of a BJT bipolar junction transistor you might be aware of how a BJT symbol looks like. Now, this is symbol of a yes you saw it correctly this is symbol of a MOSFET. So, this is showing a symbol of a MOSFET. So, what are the terminals in a MOSFET gate which is which is equivalent to the base in a BJT. So, you have a gate and you have drain which is equivalent to the collector and you have source which is equivalent to the emitter of BJT. So, you have they have given option for both you can have uh, you can use a BJT here or you can use a uh, MOSFET here. So, that is the basic area about about this uh, uh, transistor section. Now, so the next block we will look at is the DC DC converter block that is what you are seeing right now in your screen. So, this is the DC DC converter block. So, as we have discussed the input supply that the board can take is plus 10 volt ground and minus 10 volt which we saw uh, in the input section. But now, as I have discussed that we might have to use, so this is the, this is where we will give the plus 10 minus 10 volt supply. So, let us, let us see the DC DC converter. So, uh, as we have discussed, uh, we might have to use other voltages also because different ICs work on different power rails. It is called power rail. What is power rail? Power rail is the supply voltage at which the IC will work. Just like we tell VCC, VDD etcetera for transistors. BJT uh, MOSFET etcetera. There is VCC, VDD for ICs also. You might have very well come across this might sound very trivial to you, but then uh, we have to cover everything properly so that you understand. So, some ICs might require a uh, different uh, voltage rate. So, for that purpose only this DC DC converter is provided here. So, what does this DC DC converter do? Just see the pencil pointed see here. So, we can have two options of output voltage generated from the input voltage. What is the input voltage? Input voltage is 10 volt that is here. So, 10 volt is, so this is a jumper 
I think you might have seen jumpers. So, this is how a jumper looks like this yellow jumper. So, how does jumper look like? So, inside one end are holes see here these are holes. So, they will have two pins two, two insert insert locations and then at the top these pins will be connected. So, these are connected here shorted you will be able to see here. So, he, you can check it same jumper is connected here. So, here see at top there is a metal piece. So, that will connect this this berg to this berg. So, then what it does what it does 10 volt is connected to V in this V in goes here. So, you can give that V in here. So, if you suppose you do not want to give this 10 volt. So, if you connect like this the 10 volt that is supplied to the board already will come here through internal routing to internal routing and that 10 volt will be transferred to V in here. So, then why are this V in bergs given that is because if you want to give some other V in voltage. So, if you want to give some other V in voltage you have to first remove the 10 volt that is given. So, let us remove it. Now, we have removed the berg ok. Now, there is no input voltage. Now, if you want you can connect from external supply you can connect a different voltage. Let us say you want to connect 12 volt you can connect the 12 volt directly to this V in terminal connect directly to this V in terminal. Now, but then that is a different application I want to use the 10 volt from the board only that is why we are connecting here connecting 10 volt to V in. So, this kind of jumper using jumpers like this will eliminate lot of wires within the board. This is also one thing that you should always keep in mind while making circuit design try to avoid the number of extra jumper wires that are there in your PCB. Now, let us come back. So, now your input voltage you have given next I next thing that you have to do is to see what is the output voltage you need. So, you have options see options for selecting creating 5 volt or 3.3 volt. So, and that output voltages you can so this is not the point this is not the port where the output voltage comes what is this port it is written above V out select what does that mean what is the output voltage you want. So, one thing to keep in mind is that you will not be able to generate both voltages at the same time you have to select which voltage you need. Let us say we want to select 5 volt then you have to put another jumper and put it like that such a way that you will select 5 volt. So, I have put the jumper. So, when I put the jumper what happens V out select has selected 5 volt. So, if you want to select 3.3 volt what you have to do remove the jumper and connect it to the other 2 pins. So, now it we have selected 3.3 volt once we have done this the remaining circuit here that is the core if you look at it this is TPS TPS is usually Texas power supply. So, these are power supply ICs and they have their part numbers 40200. What does that mean? It usually means like uh, it the, the, that part number has information about what is the maximum output current that uh, the IC can supply. So, mostly this would mean that it can supply 2 amps we have to go back and check it and then so this is the power supply IC this is a diode it is a big power diode because this is a power supply section. So, it needs to uh, support much more higher current supplies and then other resistor and capacitors that are required for the power IC to function these are these are capacitors and other components. See it is written capacitor C212, C211 mm. these two are capacitors. Now, once this is done you once we have given selection for 3.3 volt this from th uh, this IC will work and generate 3.3 volt for you and you will get the 3.3 volt in these V out pins that you can take out. You can also test whatever you have you are getting here using test points here. These are just to for you to debug in case output is not coming in case some of these resistors have gone bad or if IC itself has gone bad within the board and you are not getting your output voltage. You should not probe here instead you can probe on your test points why this helps is these test points isolate that particular signal and allowing you to debug the circuit much better. This is another thing you should keep in mind while doing circuit design you should give sufficient test points on your board. So, that when you are bringing up the board so the process when you design a PCB is you design the PCB you assemble components on it then slowly slowly you have to bring up the board what does bring up bringing up the board mean slowly slowly testing each sub sub regions of your PCB to ensure that they are working and overall finally, the PCB as a whole should work. 
So, for you to do that sequential it is a very laborious sequential process for that sequential process to work you should have sufficient number of test points that is what they have also given here. So, the there is a test point for V in there is even a test point for ground sometimes the ground will not come properly if the ground does not come properly then the whole circuit will not work. So, there is a test point for V out there are a lot of test points. So, this is how this DC DC converter section works. The next the block very important very crucial block especially for a coarse and analog circuits that is provided in this uh, kit is the op amp inverting type 1 inverting op amp inverting section. So, that that the core IC that is shown here is this IC that is mounted here see that is this is the IC that is mounted here this is the if you look at the name it is the TL082 which we have discussed in the beginning this is the TL082 op amp IC. So, this has two op amps connected in inverting configuration how is that connected let us see. So, what is inverting configuration in inverting configuration uh, the input will be applied to the inverting terminal of the op amp and the non inverting terminal will be grounded that is what we are seeing here see the positive is grounded and you have to give the ground here automatically it will be grounded uh, properly they have again they have given work for ground why suppose we are giving a ground from outside if you are giving a ground from outside then you can connect it here otherwise with the board ground itself this this non inverting terminal will be grounded and the input can only be applied to the non inverting terminal here clear cool. So, that is one op amp in this IC. So, the next op amp where it is yes you have seen it correctly where it is yes here here is the next op amp. So, this also the positive terminal or the non inverting terminal is grounded and the negative terminal or the inverting terminal is connected to the rest of the circuit. So, what is the rest of this circuit? So, this is a network of capacitor options they have given you. So, this is a network of resistors and capacitors which you can use. So, if you have seen a non inverting uh, let us say non inverting inverting amplifier configuration you will have a resistor connected before the before you go into the inverting terminal and after the resistor only your input will come let us say. So, then you have 2 2.2 k 2 what is 2 k 2 is 2.2 4 k 7 is what 4.7 k 10 k is 10 k 1 k is 1 k. So, they have given all these resistor options here. So, what you can do is you can connect your input here then you can connect it through this resistor directly you connect your input here. So, what will happen input will come here it will pass through this resistor and then go to the inverting terminal. Let us say you do not want that then you can direct you do not want to want it to be given through a resistor you can directly connect it here also see in minus what is op amp 1 b b op amp invert inverting input you can directly convert given you can directly give or you can give through a resistor. So, they have also given a capacitor. So, they have also given a capacitor you can you can even connect it through a series combination of this resistor and capacitor or you can connect it through a capacitor all that flexibility is provided through these bugs. What all capacitor options are provided 1 microfarad is there 0 0.1 microfarad is there 0 0.1 microfarad another type is there and 0 0.01 microfarad is there. So, this gives you flexibility to make your circuit this way. So, same way see plus 10 volt is connected here you can if you want to give if you want to give out for plus 10 volt from outside that also you can give like this and finally, your inverting amplifier output will come in through this these pins. From here your output will come you can take out the output and view it in a micro uh, oscilloscope or, 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 or take this out for further circuits ok. So, this is how it works and this we have explained this one right this part same way this part is also connected. So, we have op amp 1 a negative terminal input you can either directly give the input or you can give it through the resistors whichever resistor you want you can give you can give these resistors. So, you can even make a combination of these resistors by shorting these two resistors then they will come in parallel and then you can give your input to one of them. So, 1 1 k and 2 k 2 resistor will come in parallel and this I see. So, this is the I see that is finally, get it gets connected to, but just that they have taken out these lines like the see here these pins right these are the effective pins these pins they have taken out you see these tracks these are the PCB tracks. So, they have taken out those tracks and connected it here through internal layers and also on the top layer 
of the PCB. See you all, can see all these tracks. These tracks, these tracks, these tracks, these tracks, all are tracks. So this, this uh, TL zero A two op amp, which is a dual op amp, it has two op amps inside. That is what is connected here. Now, let's say something happens. Op amp while testing, if you have see, if you have test done some preliminary testing yourself, op amps while testing may go bad. They can get burnt up and they won't stop working. If there is a thing, let us say if you want to replace this TL0A2, this option is also there. You can actually remove this TL0A2, just you just need to pull it, slowly take it out. So, you can take it out like this. So, this is your TL0A2 IC. Make sure to not touch the pins because you will have ESD. ESD your hands will have uh, electrostatic discharge. So, if they touch the pins right then uh, the IC may get damaged. So, make sure that you do not touch the tip of the pins. So, like this you can remove and replace with another TL0 A2 in case this TL0 A2 goes bad. So, you can again place it back. So, when you place it back make sure you are placing it back on the correct pins and not ulta because otherwise the IC may go bad. So, you should always make sure that that is done properly. So, then just put it back and insert it and then you are back to working condition you can again check it. So, this is the type 1 inverting section that is very important if you want to have a inverting amplifier in your circuit or if you want to just study how inverting amplifiers are working. So, the next section uh, in the board is the op amp full, full section. So, what is it the previously we saw the inverting section where what was the what was what was the observation the positive terminal or the non inverting terminal of the op amp was grounded you did not have option to give input there. So, this section the only thing different in this section is that here it is full what does this what does full mean full means this section gives you full flexibility to give inputs to both the inverting and the non inverting terminal of the op amp. So, so we are using a same IC here, but then that flexibility is not given. So, they have given two or such things so that students do not get confused while learning the concepts. So, they have given an inverting section separately where they are not giving you option to give input to the non inverting terminal and here once you learn the non -invert inverting configuration you can migrate to a higher version where you learn more and you can you, and you get into higher complexity. So, that way that is the difference between the previous section and this section. So, this is a full op amp full section. So, he, uh, here it is see you can see it is very clearly visible. So, the uh, the inverting terminal the non inverting terminal in both they are giving you option to give input. So, that is op 2 a in plus op 2 a in, in minus op 2 a in plus mm, like that for the next op amp there are two op amps in this one package of IC. So, then again the same con the help the same use usefulness of different capacitors and resistors is given you can play with these resistance capacitors to make the circuit of your choice here. So, this is the resistor array same values 1 k 2 k 2 10 k 4 k 7 1 k and capacitors 0 0.01 microfarad 0 0.1 microfarad 1 microfarad. So, the capacitor options are given right and they have given you same set of similar set of capacitor and resistor options for the non inverting terminal also that is the section here this is that section. So, you can give uh, the uh, resistor capacitor com combination as input through the resistor capacitor you can give input or you can directly give input from here same way same as the way we saw here. So, same thing because of I think uh, area constraints they have not given 5 options for the resistor they have given 3 options. You can always give through other resistors also by using the breadboard that is given uh, in the board which we saw earlier. So, that way you can actually give whatever resistor combinations you want or capacitor combinations you want and you can give inputs to both your inverting terminal and your non inverting terminal. So, this way you can use the full functionality of the op amps that are provided in the chip and that is why this section is called op amp type 2 full. So, now uh, we have covered the uh, power section of the board, the DC DC converter section of the board, the diodes uh, in the board, trimmers and then we looked at the op amp uh, inverting how the inverting op amp uh, functions then and can be tested and then we saw a section where there is a full functionality of the op amp is used in this op amp full uh, section. 
uh, now it's time for us to look at another very uh, a big uh, portion of the board the like at least area wise a portion that is occupying a huge chunk of the board which is the analog multipliers so analog multipliers are uh, a very important uh, module or a concept uh, in analog circuit design so what does an analog multiplier do so uh, basic mathematically so let's say we have two analog signals uh, you can say that one signal is sine wave a sin omega t another signal is say a cos cosine wave uh, let's say b cos omega 2 t so a sin omega 1 t and b cos omega 2 t each having separate frequencies these are two analog wave analog signals now if we can refer design a circuit which gives an output as a sin omega 1 t multiplied by b cos omega 2 t as the output then we would call that as an analog multiplier so it is basically multiplying your two input signals that is a basic fundamental operation of an analog multiplier uh, this is something uh, in the analog domain which is it is this, this is very difficult to do if you look at it from a uh, circuit design point of view uh, we uh, we will get into that later at later point of time now we will see given that we have few signals how is this op amp uh, or, how, or how is this uh, system lab kit helping us to realize uh, a multiplier functionality so in this uh, the core uh, ic that is used is the mpy 634 ic which is an analog multiplier ic now here you can see the ic uh, being placed there are three sections of the mpy 634 circuit here it's very clearly visible this one so set one set one set two and set three so three sets are there all are same it is just for you to have um, more uh, flexibility to use more number of uh, signals if you want to multiply now if here you see a kind of a flow diagram shown here so this flow diagram is basically depicting you mathematically how the input signals that come finally become the output signal this shows what exactly happens inside this ic which is mpy 634 and this IC is sitting here and it is routed to all these Berg connectors as you can see you can see routing lines here see you can see routing lines here so these routing lines are from this top layer few lines would be routed in in between layers that is why it is not all the lines are not visible so I think you are uh, uh, you have basic familiarity with PCB design and PCB routing I will keep coming back to uh, basics of this so that you understand uh, the uh, ergonomics of designing well assembled PCBs also along with this course. So, uh, so these are the routing lines the, the whole functionality of MPY 634 is shown schematically or diagrammatically here it does not mean that this acts, acts as extra functionality and this is something that is extra no whatever this IC is doing it is routed and is spread out here and what happens inside this IC is shown here this is done so that students who work with this board will find it easy to uh, understand what is happening that is a whole idea because this is a kit for understanding basic analog circuit design which I am again reiterating now so what does this do what is the basic functionality that happens so as you can see let us start here so first we have to look at inputs and power supplies so this is a power supply plus 10 volt ground and minus 10 volt these three are required this would be internally routed to this IC so you just need to provide them so by default from here from the main power supply itself if you can see see this route routing here going on going so that would be already routed to these ICs so you do not actually have to give supply but in case you do not want to give this from this main power supply and you want to supply from outside it is for that option that these bergs are provided plus 10 volt ground and minus 10 volt but you need not use it if you are directly going to use from the main power with this same thing I had mentioned to you before also in these two subsections I am just reiterating so that you do not forget it now next let us look at the inputs so these are the inputs x1 x2 y1 y2 z1 z2 these are the inputs what happens with the inputs we will cover shortly I just want you to have a system level view of this before we get into the details now this is where the output comes output is routed from one port of the uh, MPY 634 IC and they have put some few decoupling capacitors here as part of the circuit design 
then we have another factor here this is called scale factor 1 by SF. So, that is used to have provide a scaling to the uh, overall process. Now, let us see how this happens how this works. So, as I have told x 1 x 2 are 2 inputs basically you can consider this as a differential input here you have an adder here ok an adder here and uh, here it is plus and here it is minus clear. So, what happens at the output of this adder what do you get x 1 is coming here x 2 is coming here. So, it will be x 1 minus x 2 because here minus x 2 comes. So, x 1 is added to minus x 2. So, you get x 1 minus x 2 at the output of this adder here ok leave it there. Now, we are having y 1 and y 2 here same mechanism happens here. So, what do you get here you will get y 1 minus y 2 just like this x 1 minus x 2. So, x 1 minus x 2 has come here y 1 minus y 2 has come here. Now, the scale factor also also come here 1 by SF the scale factor is usually related to uh, the voltage trimming and all uh, which is uh, which is more into more detail right now you just consider that this is some reduction factor that you have let us say scale factor SF value is 10. So, you will basically have 1 by 10 coming here ok. Now, this is the multiplier block. So, what does this do? whatever input it gets it multiplies them and gives the output here ok that is clear. So, now what happens x 1 minus x 2 y 1 minus y 2 1 by s f these are the 3 inputs that are coming to this multiplier. This multiplier again I am telling you actually sits inside this IC it is just shown here for your understanding it does not mean that there is another operation happening here and there is another operation happening here what happens here is shown here only signals are taken from here they finally, go into this IC where this mentioned processing takes place and then you get the final output ok. Let us come back. So, we have the multiplier here x 1 minus x 2 has come here y 1 minus y 2 has come here 1 by s f has come here this multiplier will multiply all of them together. So, what you will get here what you will get here is x 1 minus x 2 which is this into y 1 minus y 2 which is this into 1 by s f which is this. So, what you will get effectively x 1 minus x 2 into y 1 minus y 2 by s f that is what you get here that goes to the input of this positive terminal of this open loop connected amplifier with open loop gain of a ok. Here a is the open loop gain of an amplifier that is there inside this IC that might not be too high. So, that we will get a reasonably reasonable output with that will stay within the limits of its supply voltages plus 10 volt minus 10 volt. Now, there is one more section here that is here ok. So, this is the third set of input called set 1 and set 2. So, what comes here what comes here will be again this adder system is there. So, you get z 1 minus z 2 here ok. So, that comes here cool fine. So, what do we have here again I am telling we have x 1 minus x 2 into y 1 minus y 2 by s f here we have z 1 minus z 2. So, this what it does this acts like a differential amplifier plus is there minus is there with an amplification of a. So, what do you get as output whatever comes here minus whatever comes here whatever comes here minus whatever comes here into a clear. So, what is that x 1 minus x 2 into y 1 minus y 2 by s f ok minus z 1 minus z 2 into a that is your effective output. So, you can see that now multiplier action has actually taken place. So, x 1 and y 1. So, let us say x and y are differential inputs. So, effectively you can write x as x 1 minus x 2 and y as y 1 minus y 2. So, that is getting multiplied in the final output expression. So, v out is equal to a into x 1 minus x 2 into y 1 minus y 2 by s f minus z 1 minus z 2. So, z 1 will be taken like so you can consider z 1 as some some kind of an offset correction. So, it is not actually getting multiplied with other signals it is only getting multiplied by the amplification factor here. So, that is like it is trying it is provided so that you can do some offset correction if you require like 
by default if you give if you ground z1 and z2 here your minus in negative terminal inverting input will be zero right grounded so you will basically get what you get x1 minus x2 into y1 minus y2 into a by sf that's what you get that will be direct multiplier operation but if you want to do some offset correction you can make use of the third terminal that is the overall working of this analog multiplier section hope it is very clear to you now the same functionality is repeated here in set 2 and same functionality is repeated here in set 3 also without any changes so this allows you to give how many inputs you can give x1 x y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 basically you can give almost 6 into 2 12 sets of inputs with 3 inputs for offset correction in this uh, system and get 3 different outputs out of the uh, uh, section so this is how analog multiplier works and in future modules we will actually show you after connecting signals how this multiplier action is taking place we will connect certain signals to these in inputs and also show you how offset correction is happening by connecting to z1 and z2 simple without any resistor or capacitor or any other passive components simply by connecting supplies or analog signals to these inputs you will be able to beautifully see the multiplier operation so with that you will be able to understand one of the most important modules in analog circuit design which is the analog multiplier 